Hello, everyone. Good to Zoom with you here today. My name's Lance Hunt. I'm the Hicks Prep Club Program Manager. I'm conducting this Zoom here today focused on senior high students. I appreciate you taking the time out your schedule to be with us today. Um, looking forward to working with you this year. Please feel free to, you know, type in the chat room i'll be posting different questions and information and also emailing additional information out to you but if you have any questions i'll do my best to answer them um, as we go through um, this lesson which will be on time management you know there's only so many hours minutes and seconds in a day that we have to sort of look after and it's important for us to sort of get on track and making sure we're doing everything we can to be the most productive individuals we can and those that will be the topic um, for this evening's lesson i'll continue to um work with zoom if anyone has any challenges like i said please type it in i'll do my best to respond and let you know my first question for everybody or um is going to be well let me start with this i'm going to um put up a little poll for you to answer if you can. All the polls are going to be anonymous and everything. Um, so you can just answer just so I'll get a good idea of sort of who um, is on the Zoom today and sort of who's um, with us. Um, so I'm going to um, launch this poll for you. Please let me know if you can't see it. It will be a series of um, two or three different questions just for my information i appreciate your anonymous responses as we have everyone jumping on just put the poll up feel free to answer the questions they're all anonymous um, if you can see them I'll give you another 30, 45 seconds to respond if you can. Good to see some familiar names, some new names. See Aaliyah, Mari, Andre Payton, Arnez, Sister Banks. Mm -hmm. Anaya, mm -hmm. O'Hara. All right, going to wrap up the poll in another 10 seconds or so. So whoever has it, please um, do your best to respond to those three poll questions. I appreciate it. Hey, Elijah, how's it going, man? Good. All right. So I'm going to wrap up the polling. One who's answered is everyone is jumping on. All right, so we got um, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Right, welcome on board, everyone. People from all sides of town except the east side. A lot of people like math today, it seems like. I'm a math person myself. All right, majority of people plan on going to a four-year college, some two-year, some going to work. Um, that describes everything I did when I got out of school. Uh, wow, a lot of business and a lot of health majors um, and a lot of others. So thank you for taking the time to respond to those questions there. I appreciate it. So we'll have that information. 
All right, time management, time management. You know, one of the activities I would um, love to do, and you know, we'll be doing it virtually, so you know, do your best to do it, is um, just simply, you know, um, I initially mentioned there's only so many minutes, um, seconds, and everything in a day. You know, one of the things for us to sort of get to know or an activity to get familiar with time is just I would love for everyone to, if you can, you know, depending on where you're at, what you're doing, you can close your eyes um, to do it. You can um, stand up for this amount of time. Um, and what I want you to do the best you can is um, to guesstimate what 30 seconds is, okay? Not with looking at a clock or a time or anything, but just close your eyes or stand up or whatever other activity you want to do, try to do for 30 seconds, just for you to gauge how long 30 seconds is, all right? So when I begin on three, begin that for me. And then once again, open your eyes or stop when you think that time period has passed. In three, two, one. All right, it's actually been 40 seconds or so. So when 30 seconds went by, you know, you can judge for yourself how close you were um, to opening your eyes or standing up at that time. But, you know, this sort of the big thing for us to accept and understand in that little activity is that we all assess time a little bit differently. You know, there's only 24 hours in a day um, that we have, but uh, we experience it in different ways, right? For some of us, 30 seconds was a long period of time. Others, it was a short period of time, okay? But regardless of um, how it works out or how it made you feel, you know, there are um, only a certain amount of hours in a day and we need to sort of manage them to the best of our ability to be as successful as we can in achieving everything um, that we might want to during a particular day. And we'll cover sort of a couple of um, um, helpful things that might get us all better on time. There's always something that we can improve and do better. Okay. Another little quick activity we're going to do is I'm just going to grab a number. Let's say if you had um, $86,400. Okay. Um, and there's a couple of rules with that. Maybe. Um, you can't save any of it. You can't put it in the bank or save any of it. But if you just have, you know, one day to spend that money any way you want, or it disappears and loses it. If anybody's familiar with the movie called Brewster's Million, um, he had like 30 million to spend um, in a week. But if you had you know, $86,400 to spend in a day, what are some things you might spend it on? knowing that you can't carry anything over, you can't keep it, you can't put it in the bank. And as you think about that, um, it's really gonna assess and have you need to prioritize what's important to you, okay? If you have to spend that in one day, who or what are you gonna spend it on? Who or what are you gonna invest your money in? What are you gonna do with your money, okay? Anybody have any hints or suggestions, feel free to um, speak up or type something on in. Any ideas? How are you going to do it? What are you going to spend your, what, $86,400 on? Everybody's being shy?
All right, necessities, what might some of those necessities be? Invested in business, good idea. Anyone else? Invest, a lot of invest. Decent car, absolutely. That's a beyond decent car if you spend all 86,000 on it. Investing, investment. All right, good that you are thinking long-term when you're talking about investment because that is something that you sort of have to sometimes research or you know look long term it's not just about what you're spending now but it's about um what you're going to do um, over a particular amount of time so as you come up with the good options or thinking about what you would do with your particular money really if we're thinking about it you know 86 400 isn't an arbitrary number 86,400 is exactly how many seconds there are in each day. So as we're thinking about some of those decisions we're making as far as what we would do with that money, if we had it, it really is a reflection on sort of what we value, um, what our priorities are, what we might have in mind, um, the things that are important to us. So as we're thinking about sort of what we're doing with our days and what we're doing with our time over the course of a day, 86,400 seconds is exactly how much time each and every last one of us have in a 24 hour period. What are we doing with it? All right. You know, a lot of people are putting investing, a lot of people are putting, um, spending on maybe in vehicle or we're looking towards the future really. And that's great to see in here, especially for your senior high school students. So is that really what you're doing with your time now? Are you studying and preparing enough? thinking about your future, knowing that high school is going to be ending soon enough for everyone within three to four years for all of you, and we're getting ready to take that next step. But knowing that everything that we do and we decide to do and that we invest our time and energy in now is really going to determine what options we have going forward in the future. All right? So as we're thinking about what we're doing with our time and what we're thinking about what we're doing if it was money, making sure both of those things are really reflecting who we are, what we value, and what we want to do. All right. Who can tell me, you know, um, what time management is? Who wants to tell me what time management is? Feel free to raise your hand or you can unmute yourselves now if you have something you want to say. Managing your time. What is time management and what does it mean to you? Prioritizing, absolutely. Interorganizing, learning how to use it, absolutely. The best use of your time, excellent wording there. What you have to do throughout the day, absolutely. Time management is really goes down to um, how we're using the limited amount of time we have over a particular period of time. You know, time management really means continually striving to improve our effectiveness. And our effectiveness ends up being what we actually do. How you do it, both which are very important in managing our life and our career and our goal. So how you spend your time and how effective you are really ends up being the key to time management. There are many things and skills that we can learn to improve our time management, improve how we use our time and how we use our energy through the course of a day, week, month, and year. All right. But all of us run into barriers. You know, the biggest obstacles um, that we run into when we're talking about managing our time are the barriers that prevent us from being successful. All right. Anybody want to list for us uh, what are some common time management barriers that they feel people run into?
You might have any barriers, and barriers are just things that prevent you from sort of staying on time. Distractions, absolutely. Lack of prioritizing, time conflicts, procrastination, absolutely. Not planning when to spend your time in certain things or on certain areas, absolutely. Unorganization, absolutely. You know, we all have a lot of ideas of what we want to do with our time, but are we planning um, and using our time to make sure we're organized in implementing the things we want to do with our time, all right? Procrastination, procrastination is really just us not taking the time to prioritize anything, you know? We're feeling overwhelmed or maybe we're bored or a lack of urgency, you know? And having an urgency or focus is essential to time management, all right? We all have deadlines. Maybe they're self-imposed, maybe they're imposed by your school, by your teachers, what you have to accomplish, you know, an assignment, a project, maybe it's work. You have to go to work at a particular time and you, when you get home, maybe it's cleaning up your room, cleaning up the house. Maybe you have other duties and responsibilities that you have um, to do. Us being focused on handling those things um, um, is essential to us being able um, to be successful. All right, I see someone said, um, the mute isn't working. I'll see if I can um, fix that. All right. But like I said, us not being able to um, stay focused and um, sort of overcome some of the procrastination um, things that have us procrastinate can really um, cause problems for us. All right. Um, interruptions. Someone mentioned interruptions. Absolutely right. You know, um, interruptions and procrastinations go hand in hand. You know, we allow other things to get involved in what we're doing. And really, anybody who has a cell phone or a, um, any type of electronic device, they're just distractors. Exactly. When you can look up anything anywhere in the world to get information on anything. You know, a lot of us now just sit and watch TV sometime and sometimes just listen to different words or topics that are brought up and begin searching it, searching it um, on our different devices just because um, we have the time or really we have the technology to sort of make that happen. Um, and we don't want to get ourselves sort of in that situation whereas um, we're not able to handle or complete or do everything that we might want to because we're just playing with our electronic devices and not being disciplined in sort of what we want to do and what we um, need to do. Okay. And on as I tried to um, sort of invite something, I'm not sure if it's your device or if it's my device, but um, I sent another request to unmute. Sometimes we both have to press a button on it um, that sort of um, will allow that to happen. But hopefully everyone else is able to um, communicate and unmute if they like. All right. So once again, some other um, things people um, typed in was not prioritizing. Absolutely right. You know, one of the things we all need to do in our life, just like um, the example I use as far as, you know, um, the money or even, excuse me, the money, 86,400, which is the amount of seconds, you know, the things we decided to do or select, if that was money we we're spending, really ends up being our priorities, okay? Sometimes we get mixed up and confused in that though. Like I say, those distractions take us away from our priorities. And those are two things that don't uh, match well, Dis priorities and distractions, because there are a certain amount of things we need to accomplish and achieve every single day, okay? And there's a way we can 
sort of focus on those things by making sure we're sort of listing those things as priorities and having those things listed somewhere for us to sort of view and be able to interact and see that information to help keep us on track. All right. So for the priority, excuse me, the barriers that were listed, you know, some people list a um, procrastination, um, not setting time limits, um, not prioritizing, um, distractions. What are some solutions to overcoming those barriers? What are some solutions that y'all have for overcoming those barriers? For instance, um, procrastination and distraction, how do you overcome those barriers? setting schedule and forming plans. Absolutely, that's a great idea to help you. How else can we overcome distractions? Having a planner, absolutely. That is one of the most important things we all need to sort of establish and I'll cover something in a minute as far as planners are concerned. Overcoming, focusing on what's important in your life. And that's um, hard for us to do sometimes because there's so many options out there. But one of the big things we all have to recognize and understand, there are always going to be a million and one things to do, but there's not always going to be time in your day to do them all. So it is important for us to list and sort of have a priority list of things we want to do, things we would like to do, and things, if we have extra time, that we'll you know, begin to do or learn. Us having those lists will always have something for us to sort of go back on and look at and decide, hey, I said I wanted to learn maybe how to canoe or camp out or learn to um, dance or become involved in a particular car game or online game or activity. But when we actually do have free time, is that what we're spending our free time on or do we just fill in the blank with whatever is available at that time, okay? Right. Any other ideas for overcoming or solution to um, these barriers we've discussed? How about not prioritizing or not setting limits? How do we overcome those barriers? Not prioritizing or not setting limits. Reminders on your phone or sticky notes. You know, that's one of the big things when we're talking about sort of um, staying on time and keeping a schedule. Uh, so many people have electronic devices nowadays, but are we using that to stay on time and to manage our time effectively? You know, if it's something we want or somewhere we need to be, you can set a million and one reminders on it. You can set a weekly reminder. If there's a particular day and time you always want to start, begin, or end something, you know, an electronic device isn't, isn't just an alarm to wake us up in the morning. We can set those same alarms throughout the day for us to stay on task and um, be able to handle the things we need to. Remind yourself um, that there are limits. Absolutely right. You know, one of the biggest challenges um, we all run into in getting stressed is that we somehow, excuse me, we make the mistake of thinking that we can do more in a time period than might even be physically possible, okay? There are only so many hours in a day, okay? And sometimes we overburden ourselves with too many things, it's always best for us to all to learn how to say no. Not no to everything, but no to things that aren't on our, our priority list. Like I said, if we have a listing of things we need to do, we want to do, and might do if we have extra time, and we have those things listed, 
and we're referring back to that list, then we won't let other nominal things just jump on it. You know, maybe a friend or a family member calls and says, what are you doing? And you say, nothing. Well, we might be doing nothing this second, but if we have that list of things we can be doing, there are other things we can do. Because when we're telling somebody we have nothing to do, what that's telling them is, oh, they need something to do, so let me give them something to do. And that's when we get caught up in the situation of getting involved in additional things that you know are going to take up our time when we haven't successfully completed maybe everything we want to um, for the day. And the biggest challenge we really run into when we're dealing with friends and family members, if they ask us if we're doing anything, we tell them nothing is that when we go to do something with them that they might ask of us, we might think it's going to take five or 10 minutes. It might end up taking two, three, four hours. And then we realize at the end of the day, I didn't get a chance to do what I needed to do or what I wanted to do. And that can be um, very um, heartbreaking sometimes when we realize I didn't do anything that I wanted to today. I did everything that everyone else wanted me to do during the day. So making sure we sort of are focused on what we need to accomplish and complete is really essential to us sort of being successful throughout the day, right? There are some common things that we all do every single day that take up time, okay? What are some common things that we do that we all do every day that are going to take up time and really need to be listed on our schedule as well. Because if we don't have something special to do, there are still about five hours a day, excuse me, five to 10 hours a day that are already filled without us even trying. What are some of those common things that we all have to do every day? Anybody, what are some common things that we all have to do every day? Brush your teeth, house duties, chores, absolutely. Those things aren't going anywhere and they're going to take time. School, absolutely. We're going to be in school, you know, six, seven hours every single day except Saturday and Sunday. Um, sleeping, absolutely right. All of those things that we have to do that we're going to do, regardless of anything else that we have on our schedule, right? What other thing? Some people work, absolutely. We're always going to have those things to do if we have a work schedule, which for most people, school is work, their primary job, but those things are always going to be on a schedule and everything. So anybody else? Chores, maybe there's family time, maybe there's social time. Right? Right, we gotta wash, we gotta get washed up every day. You know, one of the biggest challenge, <laughs> challenges I run into with some of my family members is exactly that. How long is it gonna take you to get ready for bed? You know, some people think, oh, I'll get ready for bed in five or 10 minutes. But after you brush your teeth, wash your face, get your clothes ready, get washed up, put your night clothes on, that can sometimes be an hour or two. Um, and once again, in a blink of an eye, that time can be gone. Eat, absolutely right. We don't realize how much time we spend eating through the course of the day, okay? And it's not just us greedy folks like myself. It's just, it takes time. When we have to cook something, then we have to clean up behind ourselves, then we have to sit down and eat. All of those things take time. Okay, so really an hour to two a day is just spent eating. Time alone. Time alone is something we definitely need to schedule for ourselves. We need to put time on our schedule to enjoy ourselves. Time for us to sit back, relax, think, maybe prioritize some of the other things we want to take care of. Okay, but we do need to put time for ourselves on our schedule. And that's one of the things we lack to do a lot. We make time for everyone else. Like I said, a friend or family member can call us. We say we have nothing going on, so they fill in our time. Really, that might be the hour you need to get focused, to re-energize, or just sit back and think, okay? One of the biggest challenges and what we don't do is sit back 
rethinking and reassessing sort of our day, what we've been through, um, what we might need to change or adjust and things like that. Okay, so it's sort of going on to cover some of the things we definitely want to learn to do with our time. We discussed some of the barriers, maybe how to overcome some of those barriers and the things that we have going on on a daily basis. Okay, now it comes down to knowing this information, what are we going to do with it? All right, we need to get or have a planner. You know, some people think um, a planner just means you have to go to a bookstore and buy something. No, if you have a sheet of paper, you have a planner. Okay, if you have an electronic device, you have a planner. If you have anything you can write on, a dry erase board, um, anything you can write on and list things on, you have a planner. Okay, and one of the biggest things we need to do is to plan our time. Okay, we normally have a time we want to get up to get ready for the day. Okay, do we include in that time 10, 20 minutes for us to just sit back and think before we walk out the day? Do we include time in that for us to motivate ourselves, be it through a prayer or maybe it's through listening to a positive message, a positive song, something to help us get energized for the day? Okay. It's excellent if you use your phone or calendar um, to track your schedule throughout the day. If you have a paper planner and you carry that around and look at it, absolutely right. If you have a piece of paper, you can write on that piece of paper, Monday through Friday, daily duties, daily assignments. You can even list on it activities I want to do this week, okay? That's one of the things I think we really miss and forget to list, activities I want to do this week, okay? You should be tracking your schoolwork. You should be tracking any other work or assignments you have to do. You should be tracking your chores. You should also be tracking the time you need for yourself. Listing those on a piece of paper, a calendar, or schedule. But having a piece of paper, a calendar, or schedule is a wonderful idea. It means nothing if we don't look at it through the course of the day, okay? So many times we have a calendar, we have a planner. At the end of the day, we look at it and say, oh, I forgot all about that. No, through the whole course of the day, the reason we have a calendar or planner is for us to look on it, review it, get the information that's needed and to remind us of what we need to accomplish or achieve this day. So making sure we're always looking at our planner throughout the course of the day. It's essential to us being successful, right? It's very important for us to know ourselves, okay? Understand what is your most productive period throughout the day, okay? I realized in my life that my most productive period during the day normally is between hours of about 3 and 9 p.m. It just is. In the morning, for some reason, I wake up tired or I'm just lackadaisical. Or I'm just, it takes me a while to get a pep in my step, okay? During the early afternoon, I want to eat. I want to up, catch up on messages. I want to spend time socializing and sort of all of those things. But really, if there's an activity or assignment that I need to do, come time two, three, four o'clock, I'm focused, I'm in it, I'm working. I'm pushing through, I'm knocking things out, accomplishing things, moving forward, and it continues on. Really, I have to stop myself when it's sort of late in the evening or coming up late in the evening. I got friends and family members I need to touch base with and socialize with. I have to sort of stop working, but I realize that's my groove period. Does anyone else know when their particular most energetic or most focused or most um, successful or productive period is throughout the day. Because the more you know about yourself, the more you understand when you're being the most productive, the more you need to adjust your schedule to reflect that time. Okay? Because once again, sometimes we get caught in a schedule whereas someone else came up with it for us. And maybe we need that 
to, for them to help us to stay on time, but we also need to know ourselves and recognize when we're the most successful, all right? I see 12 to 5, see, when I get home from school, absolutely. Some people, the day, that, the minute they get off the school bus, want to go and socialize and need to sort of release some of that stress from the school day. Others want to go in, knock out all their homework and assignments, get all that taken care of so that by early evening, they have the rest of the night to themselves, okay? Sometimes nighttime, okay? It's important for us to sort of assess ourselves and come up with an idea and a better understanding of when that most productive time is for us so that we can set up activities, assignments, things that we know we need to successfully complete during that time period. It will help keep us focused and on track because the one of the other challenges we run into is we list things or we put things for us to do during a time period that we're not the most productive in. So we might have an assignment that we know is going to take a couple of hours. We put in our most unproductive time during the day. We don't successfully complete it. And then we're wondering why. Well, it's because we didn't set it during the time period that we're the most productive. And that's what we need to learn and know about ourselves so that we can adjust our schedule so that it meets our needs when we're the most productive. All right. Someone talked about, you know, sort of the planner and everything. You know, one of the things we need to make sure we're listing on our schedule is time to regroup, okay? One of the biggest challenges we run into is we go through the course of a day and we come to realize or recognize that we've gotten on track. Maybe a friend or family member came in from out of town. Maybe a friend or family member needed us to take um, care of something. Maybe we thought we we're gonna drive to school that day or be able to drive to work and we didn't have the car that day. So it ended up taking us an hour or two to catch the bus to where we needed to be. And we didn't have that set in our um, time schedule, okay? I know as an adult, I've had a flat tire one day on the, on the way somewhere that I was cutting close, I needed to get something done took me an hour to change the tire and then another hour to get another tire. So it really, you know, inconvenienced me and caused me challenges in my schedule. Okay. But we need time sometimes to sit back and assess and reevaluate where we are through the course of a day. You know, maybe we planned on getting our schoolwork done as soon as we got home and we're looking at the time it's six, seven o'clock when we realize we haven't done anything yet. Um, Maybe we're in the middle of the week and we're, as we're going through the week, we come to realize it's Wednesday and I haven't done what I needed to so that I'll have free time on the weekend and we have to reassess and evaluate and say, okay, for the next two days, I can't socialize. I need to put my phone away. I need to put my um, other electronic devices away or I can't play with that PS4 or 5. I really need to focus because there are only so many hours left in a week and I want to have a free weekend, but I can't if I don't accomplish what I need to during this week. So once again, having time for us to stop and reevaluate and assess what we're doing. Sometimes at the end of every day, it's important for us to be able to do that. You know, before we go to bed or as we're getting ready for bed, if you have your planner sitting on your counter or you have that piece of paper that I talked to you about, you write on it what you need to do tape it to your wall, look at it at the end of the day and say, have I done what I wanted to do this day or this week? And if I haven't, what can I do or what do I need to adjust to get back on schedule so that I can be successful um, for the rest of this week? Okay? So making sure we're taking time to sort of reassess our schedule and what we're doing. And it's really called regrouping in what we're doing because we all get off schedule sometimes, all right? And the next thing um, for us to make sure, sort of in wrapping up that we need to um, make sure you're aware of, you know, it's wonderful to talk about having a schedule, talk about having a planner, reevaluating and assessing our time and everything. But one of the most important things we need to do is set a day and time to come up with our schedule. A schedule shouldn't be something 
that you're making up on the fly as you're going through the course of the week, okay? If we pick a time, be it Saturday or Sunday, before the week starts to recognize and realize I have these assignments due, I know this teacher is gonna be asking for this. Oh, I know this project is due on Thursday. Oh, I got a test there on Wednesday. I have a test here on Friday. Oh, I have to work on Wednesday and next Saturday. Writing down, coming up with that plan, making sure you're aware of it and really setting yourself up for the week. Setting a day and time that you're actually planning out your week so that you'll have it, you'll be focused and ready to go. Sure, some things will jump on your schedule as you're going during the week. That's why it's important to have time for yourself or free time during that schedule for you to fill in the blank with anything else that might come up. But it's very important for us to make sure we have a day and a time that we can sit down and sort of plan out our schedule for the week. What are some good times for y'all to sort of sit down and plan out your week? Is it a weekday? Is it the end of the week? What day and time is a good time for you to sit down and come up with your schedule for the week? Sundays, Mondays, Saturday, Sunday. Right? It comes down to sort of you thinking about yourself and recognizing what's going to work best for you. A lot of people are saying on Sunday before they go into the week, but some people Friday or Saturday um, because maybe that's the free time they have. So depending on you knowing yourself, making sure the first thing you're doing is putting a day and time that you're actually going to list and prioritize your events for the week um, so that you can create and have that schedule that's going to give you the focus you need to make it through a successful week, all right? Somebody even said Monday, because maybe on Monday is the time that you need to go to a particular class knowing it's gonna be your most demanding class and see what expectation that teacher might have for the week and you can adjust your schedule accordingly, all right? So just in reviewing, we talked about sort of our schedule and coming up with a good schedule, right? We all run into barriers. Some of those barriers might be procrastination, lack of prioritizing things, not setting limits, and really distractions. So many things are distractions that take us away and off schedule. But we also talked about some of the solutions to some of those barriers, using a planner, learning how to say no, prioritizing things, okay? Those are things that are gonna help us overcome some of those barriers. We also always have to set time for things that we know are gonna happen, you know? We have to sleep, we have to eat, we have to do our chores, might be a family time, social time. We also have to plan for ourselves. In doing that, we have to understand those things take time. So listing those things, sometimes we think, oh no, I'm not gonna put eating on my schedule because that's just gonna take a second. Well that second really can end up being an hour, hour and a half if we have to cook, eat, and then clean. So making sure we're listing that time in the schedule um, that we need, all right? After we're listing the actual time in the schedule we need, what we need to do is making sure we have some sort of planner. Planner is nothing more than a piece of paper. Maybe it's an electronic device. Maybe it's a formal planner you purchased or got from school somewhere for you to list what you want to do during a particular time period. Probably best to do it during a weekly basis, okay? But what you want to make sure you're doing in listing those things, list the things you have to do, the things you might want to do, and things that you'll do if you have additional time so that you don't get those things mixed up, all right? And making sure we're referring back to that schedule. Okay, so many times we get off track, but it's important for us to sort of reassess and reevaluate sort of what we're doing for the week, okay? The biggest error we run into sometimes is we fail to review our schedule or to look at it, and then we don't even recognize when we're off track. So making sure we're sort of looking 
at and reevaluating our schedule as the week goes along. And one of the most important things for us to do is to come up with a day and a time on a regular basis, we're actually gonna sit and develop our schedule for the week. You know, it's one thing to talk about, it, it's one thing to have an idea, but it's another thing to have a specific day and time that you're gonna sit down, write, list, and assess those things for the week so that we can be successful, all right? So those are sort of some of my ideas and suggestions as far as schedule and everything, some things that um, should help us out. I'll give you a quick little um, screen share for us to um, look at something that I'll look to email to everyone, just a daily schedule, you know, morning, afternoon, evening, listing the things we need to accomplish or achieve. All right, and once again, this list an hourly plan for us, but Monday through Friday, because generally speaking, that's normally the most, I wouldn't even call it dedicated, boat, but most consistent things we do, you know, be it work or school, there are set things that we're going to do during the course of the week. So having that Saturday and Sunday, generally speaking, is normally more uh, flexibility or free time. Um, sort of that's the reason the schedule is set up like this. And I can email that out to anyone who wants a copy or um, needs to review or wants to use this as a template to help them sort of begin to stay on track and to develop and to have that schedule um, that you can use. Like I said, it's just a matter of putting the information down, handwriting it, typing it in, whatever. Just begin to get disciplined and dedicated to a schedule so that you can um, stay focused and be successful as you're progressing and going through the week, all right? Couple of quick um, slogans for you, you know. One of them is, success is failure by lack of preparation. Success is failure by lack of preparation, all right? And the second one is, failure is a lack of success in planning. Failure is a lack of success in planning. And really what that's saying is, you can be successful in anything you choose to do or attempt to do if you take the time to plan it out. Similar to what y'all um, did initially when we were talking about schedules, or excuse me, talking about that 86000 $400, what you would do with your money. A lot of people talked about investing, okay? One of the things I want to make sure you're doing is investing, investing in taking the time to come up with a schedule and investing your time properly so that you can stay on track, be successful, and continue to move forward and to be productive. All right. And someone's asking, do I use a schedule? You know, I use Outlook. You know, um, once you sort of get more in an office environment, um, as far as work is concerned, my Outlook calendar saves me all day, every day. I have alarms and reminders ringing to me throughout the course of a day because sometimes, be it the boss, be it other activities, be it schools, be it students, um, will sort of draw me away sometimes or try to sort of get involved in my time. If I know how certain things I need to accomplish or achieve, um, those reminders, even last night I have, I have reminders ringing for me at 10 or 11 o'clock at night just to remind me, oh, make sure you do this and getting ready for the next day. Make sure you do this um, before you go to bed tonight um, because that's what I need to sort of get on schedule and to sort of stay on time. Uh, but once again, it's one thing that I've learned over the years that works best for me. And it's important for us all to sort of better understand ourselves so that we can be successful in um, whatever format or plan we come up with to stay on track. All right, so sort of wrapping up, just want to give a couple of reminders. Our next um, club meeting is going to be 
on November the 3rd at 6 o'clock p.m. Um, a lot of things I'm also doing now are putting different communications on our Facebook page. If you haven't joined that, go to um, you know, Facebook and just do a search under Hicks Prep Club and join our Facebook page, also our YouTube, and also our Instagram. I know I don't post that much on Instagram, but I'll um, begin putting meetings and activities on that as well. Once again, the more people who join it um, and sort of help me out in that, I'll, I'll look to um, provide additional information through those resources. All right. Anyone have any questions as we're sort of wrapping up? Questions, comments, concerns? Like I said, please feel free to reach out to me via email, text, or snail mail, or however you like, um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or if you need anything. You know, we're going through a challenging time right now, you know, um, the whole coronavirus that has um, caused so many challenges across the world, and we've had to learn and adapt and adjust. And it's been amazing some of the things that people have been able to accomplish and achieve during um, these challenging time periods. You know, a lot of people who talked about maybe they wanted to um, invest money. You know, this is an excellent time when you might not be able to sort of go out and socialize as you would have in the past to take some time and do some research, look at some YouTube videos or um, some other training materials for you to learn how to properly invest money. You know, I'll give you a quick example of that. Everybody's familiar with an iPhone and Apple and an iPad and Apple computers and everything else. When I was in college, Apple had actually went through a big downfall and wasn't doing good at all. Apple stock was selling for like two or three dollars. Okay. If I would have just invested in Apple stock while I was in college or getting out of high school, I will be in another stratosphere right now because Apple stock right now is going, and I don't even think I have this correct because the average Apple stock I think is several hundred dollars. So, you know, sort of timings, everything. So many times um, things we're involved in, we're not thinking about it, don't recognize sort of the value of it now. But if we invest in it now, you know, two or three years from now, or five or 10 years from now, it can be worth enormous amounts of money. But you sort of have to invest and be willing to sort of put your money in a spot for a, maybe a year or two. Um, but you can receive um, excellent results if you take the time to do that. So the more you learn and the more um, you grow when we're talking about investing, um, the more successful you can be. And really, you know, some of the richest people in the world nowadays are stockbrokers or people who own different um, companies that sort of do a lot of investing in things. So make sure you're taking the time to learn new things and to grow in new things as we progress and go forward. I'd like to thank everyone who's taken the time today to communicate and to join in our meeting. Please make sure you communicate or say something in the chat so I can account for everybody who's been in the meeting and everything today. If anyone has any questions, comments, or concerns, you know, please make sure you, like I said, email and send those to me. Um, hopefully everyone's taking the time and now um, will become better time managers. Remember, it's not something you sort of practice or do one time and then you're successful. It's really about successfully coming up with new ideas and creative ways and getting better at it. Because like I said, time management is exactly that. It's consistently managing your time to get better and to do better and everything like that. All right. Email address is lhunt at Habajacks. And I'll type it in the um, in the chat room. 
It's L Hunt at H A B I J A X dot org. Or you can just type in Hicks at Habajacks dot org. All right. Well, like I say, I'm sort of wrapping up. Please feel free to, you know, inbox me or send me a message if you have any particular questions. But I appreciate everyone taking the time. Looking forward to working with you during the course of the year. Um, I'll be emailing out, like I said, our policies and procedures and other information that's going to help everybody stay on track and successful and making sure you're aware of everything that's going on. I appreciate everyone who's here and who has been here. And I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you very much for your time. Everyone have a great evening.